Hi, welcome back to Wake Up Woman, where we are going to spend the rest of October talking about how to get to the meaning behind the mask that we wear. And for the first blog post in the series, it was titled, How to Easily Unmask uh, Our True Identity. And I gave you guys some homework uh, for that back in the blog post. So if you haven't already uh, checked that out, please stop and do that now because it's really important going forward in the rest of the series and to really start to discover and tap into identity. I was thinking about, okay, what can we do for October? And of course it's the month worth Halloween and fall is get getting started and, and it's so much fun. Like I love Halloween, but we don't always celebrate it like uh, the, maybe the rest of the world. But one of the things that I think about when I think about Halloween is masks. You just have to check out my mask. Eh, how you like that? I did not know this was a wrestling mask until my son pointed that out, but I think it's cool. But as women, we are all the time wearing masks and, and those masks are a good thing and a bad thing. And as we go through the month, we're gonna talk about that more and how to make those masks actually work for us. But when those things, masks aren't a good thing and when they are a good thing. So we just kind of rewind a little bit back to the blog post. I asked you guys a series of questions and one of the questions was naming a time when you felt like you were tapped into your true identity at its best. And I just wanted to share a little bit about that from my heart. I think for me, when I have truly felt the most Tracy, the most Tracy Diane Clark Sanderson in the world is times that I am engaged in um, teaching and being creative and speaking. Like during those moments, I feel like I am the most full doing the thing I was created to do and I wanted that to be what you were looking for. The, that moment in life when you're just like, this is what I'm here for. This is me. This is so me right now. Now, those were things that I was doing. So those things don't necessarily define me, but I can identify with them in a way that makes me feel um, just full of life and purposeful. So then I had you do an exercise and in that exercise I asked you to close your eyes and take a deep breath and just kind of connect with the idea that you can love a lot of things but those aren't actually you. And then to list some things about yourself like I am and then fill in the blank. So uh, for me that sounds something like um, and this is not easy, like uh, affirmations about yourself, for me anyway, is not easy at all. It's really, really hard, um, I think because it feels selfish in a way, but it's so important to be connected to the heart of who you truly are because it makes you such a richer person. It makes you so much fuller and have so much more depth and have a place to operate out of that is is so beneficial not just only for yourself but for the people around you so it's actually a very selfless thing to do to be connected with who you truly are so my list may sound something like I am creative I am loyal I am faithful I am kind I'm smart I am um, happy. I am loving. So those, those things are part of me. That, that is part of my soul. Um, and for me, and one of the things that's really, really important in my life is, is my faith. And I identify myself through my faith. Um, it's a big part of who I am. It's it's a big part of my family. And, and speaking of family, I didn't really touch on this this week, and maybe we'll touch on it some this coming week in the blog post, but the identity that we have through family is also so important. It's it's kind of one of those things that can make us or break us, because some, some people have really poor 
examples of family identity to to pull from and other people have really rich great heritage and and beautiful um, history and legacy that they've been left by their their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and aunt and uncles and um, you know for me this this week I've been um, in Tennessee at my parents um, home which is actually my grandparents home um, where I used to come and spend the summers it's where my ancestors settled in western Tennessee and there's even though I've never lived here I have a, a sense of identity with this place it's there's something that it's a connection it's it's there's roots um, and even though I didn't have a really close deep relationship with my grandparents um, you know, I can I can sense and feel their their hard work and their faithfulness and um, their love for this place that was their farm and home. So anyway, I just I just kind of wanted to to talk a little bit about that because I think a lot of people get caught up in in not having a rich legacy or heritage in their lineage, and you know what? That's okay because it can start with with you. And you can be the one that starts this amazing um, legacy for your family. And you do that through your identity of, of who you are as a person, who you, were, who you were created to be, and loving that person. Um, the other thing that I just quickly wanted to talk about when we're talking about masks is that, um, you know, they're really meant to conceal something. And as we go through out the next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about how, you know, there there's pieces of you that um, probably should stay concealed. They're not for the entire world to have access to. And I believe in authenticity. I think people should be, you know, honest and, and as transparent as possible. But there's pieces and parts of you that aren't meant to be shared with everything. And I think there's a whole lot of hype around this whole everybody has to be authentic and anything goes kind of thing because there's pieces of your heart that should be private. And there's things that are so sacred and so special that, that you should be able to pick and choose who and where you share that. Um, so anyway, I just want to encourage each and every one of you that if you are in a great place with your identity, I just want to say to you, thumbs up, keep going, keep pressing in, um, stay connected with yourself. And those of you who maybe aren't in a great place with your identity, I have this, this specific thing for you because this is what I want you to hear from me is where I have struggled the most in life is the times that I've gotten so busy and so wrapped up in what I was doing that I lost track of who I was. So I want you guys, if that's you right now, to just take a step back, to just kind of hit the pause button and spend some time really tapping back into saying, you know, this is who, this is who I am. And operating out of a place that you have an understanding and a connection with that. Because when you don't, when you don't do that, it is so easy for the world and people around you to tell you who you are, what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to believe, how you're supposed to act. And that is not cool. And it's not authentic because it's not you. You can be such a better mom and wife and employee and sister and daughter when you have a connection with this, this deeper understanding in your heart. And maybe you just need to get alone by yourself for an hour a week and spend some time by yourself. And we're gonna be making lots of lists coming up, so just be ready for that, because we're gonna be making list after list after list, um, just trying to, to go deeper and connect deeper. So if you're ready to go deeper, stay tuned for the rest of October. I've got two more parts, uh, part two and part three, that's gonna be coming up, and we will check back in with the blog post and then with the video post. So. Stay connected with who you are and tapping into your true identity. And don't forget to uh, love the masks and don't uh, hide behind them too much. Have a great time and have a blessed week.